everyone, Jillian Pocalo here, um, and today I'm going to show you how to create a carborundum print using um, Speedball's Akua, um, Speedball and Akua's uh, brand um, carborundum plate making gel. Now, if you know anything about carborundum printmaking, it's this really interesting technique that combines. Um, it's a relief print uh, technique, but it's inked up like an etching plate, but it's kind of holographic. And it was invented by artist Dox Thrash, who was a Philadelphia printmaker. If you don't know his work, Dox Thrash, check it out. It's amazing. So I wanted to show you, um, this is a carborundum print that I pulled, and I wanted to show you that it has two different techniques that um, use the carborundum gel, and I'm gonna show you how these both work together today. So what's really interesting about carborundum, the, the effect of a carborundum print, is it has that spontaneity of a monotype, um, but you can print from it multiple times. And you can also screen print with it, so you can get this sort of etching kind of a feel, like an ethereal feel, by using some plate tone. Um, and I'm going to show you all of that. So the materials are pretty easy. I'm using the carborundum gel, um, and then I'm just going to show you what else I got here. So I have a printing plate that came from my local hardware store. Um, the beauty of this is you can use, um, I mean, of course, if you're in the world of etching or intaglio or whatever, you can totally use this um, for uh, you know, like putting it onto a, a zinc or a copper plate. But what's nice is if you don't have access to those and you don't have access to um, all of the, the acids and stuff, you can get a really interesting effect by just using the plexiglass plate. Um, that you can pick up at any hardware store or cheap frames work really well. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first prepare my printing plate. Now I can apply the gel um, either by just painting it on. There's nothing that says I can't do that, but what I like is that spontaneity of a monotype. So what I have here is a cut off piece of uh, screen mesh when I'm stretching my screens, I'm usually left with just these little pieces that aren't big enough for restretching a screen. And then I just put tape around it just so that it holds it a little bit uh, more regular. I'm gonna take some of the gel with my skier spoon scoop, and I'm just gonna go right across the top. And I'm gonna take my squeegee, and I'm just gonna pull it across. And in the ideal world, I'm gonna get a nice, like one, smooth layer of the carborundum gel on here. And I sort of did, down here it kind of looks a little weird, but um, now that this surface is such that I can create a lot of textures in it. So, um, you know, I could use all of my intaglio tools and my, my, my etching stuff, but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use some random stuff that I've got. So I have forks, forks can create interesting textures. I can take a paper towel and sort of wipe away stuff and create some interesting textures that way. I'm doing it on black so you can see because, I mean, this is a, this is a clear plate, um, but you can see how receptive it is. So you really can do all of the stuff you would normally do with a monotype on this. Uh, I can make some little fun textures this way. Um, like I said before, if you decide that you want to add back in, you totally can. Um, I did carborundum printing with um, my fourth grade at my school, um, and uh, they did a really, really amazing job. Um, but so a lot of them, they tried screen printing directly on the plate, and it did, you know, sort of a jumpy thing over here. And they went back in and painted back in some details, and it totally worked. So you know, like whatever, whatever you find. You, um, unlike making an etching plate, you're not really digging into the plate, you're not doing a dry point etching, you're just taking away the surface of the this uh, carborundum gel. A little art history about carborundum is um, that it was, it's a material that's used in lithography. So um, it's used to, like when you're levigating your, your marble stone, 
it's that silica that's that is used to kind of grind down the stone. Um, Doc's Thresh figured out that he could take that and use, well, he was using shellac and glue and then putting the carborundum silica on top of his plate. Um, but what's really nice about this product is that it takes all of that work of preparing the plate right out of the mix. So here's a random, okay, all right, so that kind of turned out. So you can really have a lot of fun um, trying out different textures. And if I was miserable with this plate and I didn't like it, I could just wash it off. It's all water soluble stuff. So, um, so but I'm gonna hold on to this just so that you can kind of see it. Maybe I'll add a little more in, because why not? All right. <laughs> so it's really expressive. And what I like about it is you really do get that like I've said before, that spontaneity of a monotype while also being able to ink it up and print it again. And so before you pull a print from this, you're gonna wanna make sure that this really, really dries. Um, I'm not gonna pull anything from this plate uh, during this live video because I wanna let it cure for a couple of hours. Um, when I teach printmaking to my adults, um, I usually try and rush the process because I wanna show them everything all at once. And I have learned that um, you really wanna let this cure for a while. Like I think I waited maybe 20 minutes until it felt dry enough. And then I noticed that when I tried pulling a print, it was starting to come off. So you really wanna let it sit for a little while. All right, but just to show you another way to approach uh, the carborundum printing, I'm gonna take a screen that I have um, that was burned. This is, these are some plants from my backyard. And I'm going to prepare another plate just by screen printing like normal. So I've got another piece of frame. And I'm gonna just kind of lay this down somewhere. I guess that's about right. I'm gonna take the carborundum gel on my little skier spoon, scoop. And I'm just going to squeegee across. All right, so when I pick this up and take this off, so that's kind of a really neat plate. I, I think I'm gonna have fun inking that up. Um, but again, I wanna let this sit for a while. I don't wanna just rush the process because this needs to really dry. But Stay tuned, check out my Instagram. I'm probably gonna wind up doing something cool with that later on. Um, now, normally I would go right out and I would rinse this out right away so that I can keep printing from it because this it is an acrylic, so it will dry on the screen. But for right now, just to kind of save some time, I'm just kind of spot treat it a little bit. Wash it out real quick. And then when I'm when I'm done uh, and I'm cleaning up, I can clean that a little bit more effectively. All right, so there's that. Let me get this out of the way. So um, I wanted to show you, uh, again, this is one of the prints that I made. So you can see that I have this spontaneous stuff going on down here and then I, this is actually two plates that I put together uh, so the one plate was this guy I screen printed just like I did with the flowers I screen printed onto a printing plate and the reason I have this blue here was because I knew when I was going to make this plate that I only wanted to ink up this top part and then I didn't want to leave I didn't want to ink up the bottom part um, so I put the tape on the back of the plate so that that way I could kind of gauge, it was like a, st without making a stencil, it was a way that I could just kind of see where I was gonna ink this up. And then I'm gonna take this other printing plate that I made, um, and this one has that sort of more mono typey gestural thing going on down here, so I'm gonna print these together, line them up, and make, uh, make one print together. So what we're going to use today, um, and of course I want to put my other prints aside so they can dry. So what we're going to use today are the Akua 
um, the Akua inks. And you're gonna ink up kind of like you would a relief print, but you're also gonna ink it up kind of like you would an etching. That's one of the fun things about this process. Um, when I'm using Akua inks, let me put this down a little more. I'm working on a glass slab. So if I was working, if I didn't have this in place, I would totally um, put some wax paper down or a piece of plastic down or something or, or a bench hook or something. Um, but you're gonna see me inking up directly on here because this is, this is how I do it. So um, the Akua inks are really, really great. Um, they're highly pigmented and they're all non-toxic, um, but they do need to get stirred. So you'll notice that the pigments will tend to separate from the binder, and the binder is a combination of, I think it's like soy and honey, so it's, it's like, it's okay to have in your house. Um, it doesn't smell bad or anything. Um, but what I wanna do is just mix it up so that I can get a nice effect. And I think what I'm gonna do is the same thing I did here, where I'm gonna mix up a sort of a reddish color, and then I'll do the second plate. Maybe I'll mix up more of like a bluish black. All right, so I'm gonna take some of my ink and I'm just gonna put it down on my tray here. I'm just gonna put a little more down here. And let me grab another scooping device. Um, skier spoons work great. Yogurt spoons work great. Um, credit card offers work really great. <laughs> I have that color mixed up. All right. And so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to take a brayer and I'm just going to start to roll out my ink. You know what I'm forgetting? And this is like kind of really key if you're using inks, um, just because things can tend to get pretty messy is if you have them, um, dishwashing gloves. I usually have a pair of gloves that are designed specifically for my ink. They're at school right now. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink up my plate. And the, the thing that's really kind of cool is that the ink is gonna stick to the areas where there's carborundum gel. Right now you can see that it's inking up the whole thing, but the ink is gonna stay in those carborundum areas. And I'm gonna wipe away carefully so that I can take off that extra ink. Um, if you're a traditional um, etch, etcher, uh, you're not gonna wanna use your tarlatan for this because that's just gonna take the image off. You wanna kinda do like a quick wipe And you can see how beautifully that's coming off. And you don't really need to apply too much pressure at all. It'll come right off. So this is an old piece of t-shirt. Um, I think I'm gonna ink it up a little bit more actually, cause I can see that it's inked up, but I wanna make sure that it's really, that I didn't wipe too far. Um, you can also use a paper towel for this. I've found that not all paper towels are created equal. Some really uh, start to dissolve when you start to wipe away. So here's a paper towel. Let's just see how this guy does. All right, so this isn't terrible. And this is where, you know, for those of you who are into um, etching, like you can leave some of the plate tone. You can do a la poupée where you're sort of um, applying. Here, let me just show you, because why not? where you just are applying a little bit of ink to certain areas and you can get kind of painterly with this. All right, so might as well. Of course you can create stencils so that you really see that, blah, blah, blah. Like the possibilities are kind of endless. Carborundum is one of those printmaking techniques that does play well with others. All right, so I have this pretty well inked. I have some plate tone that I'm gonna leave there um, I can see the ink on the surface of those, uh, of the areas where there's carborundum. And um, the, the nice thing about um, 
all of this is that it's all non-toxic. All right. So again, I only inked up the top part and that was by design because I'm going to combine it with my other plate. Okay. So let me take you over to my little printing press. So what I have over here, whenever you're printing um, carborundum or you're printing on um, uh, paper, you want to do, you want to start with wet paper. So um, what I did was I created a wet pack where I just wet the paper before and it's still too damp for me to throw it in the press right now. So. Let me show you what you're going to look for. So I have a towel here. And um, you can also just let your paper, if you're using rag paper, you can just let your paper sit in, um, you can just let your paper sit in some water, like a tub of water. Um, obviously, you only want the rag paper that's going to sit in water because other types of paper will deteriorate. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off some of that moisture by putting it between a piece of towel. All right, so here's what I'm looking for. When I have, when the paper's ready, there are no wet spots. There, it's damp. I can feel that it's damp, but it's not soaking wet. I can't see any wet spots. I can't see any shimmer of, of wet. Um, so now I'm going to put it over here on the press. So I'm going to put plate down first. Okay. And then I'm going to put my paper down on top. All right. And then I'm just going to come on over here and pull a print. This is the best part. And my favorite thing is that when I, when I feel the plate go through, I'm going to feel a ka-chunk and that's a sign, there it was. And so there's a, that's the sign that it's come through the press. You're also gonna see a little bit of a plate mark. So I'm gonna make sure that it's all the way through. Oh, this is cool. All right, so again, I only printed the top part of that printing plate because I wanna show you the mono, the more monotypey gestural one. Um, so when you use wet paper, you're able to release more of the ink onto the paper. Uh, if you're just using dry paper, you're gonna get, the ink isn't gonna really settle into the paper. You want the paper to sort of be able to mold around the surface of the plate and the ink. And so even though I don't have, like you can see that there are plate marks, um, but you wanna make sure that the, the, it just absorbs more ink that way. So uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink up my gestural plate. All right, so I'm gonna set this one aside. It's still damp enough that I think I can probably pull another plate from this before, or another print from this before I have to re-wet it. The nice thing about Akua inks, by the way, is that um, they really only dry on paper. So if, and I've experienced this, it's really kind of cool. If I leave my Akua inks out, I can leave them out on my inking tray, which is, you know, my glass surface for days at a time and then come back and they're still workable. Like I might just need to mix them up a little bit, but they're still really workable. So they don't dry here, but they will dry here on my paper. So that's kind of a really nice feature about them. Um, and in my studio, Having things being non-toxic is super important for me because I live here and I want to make sure that everything that I have in my studio is healthy and I don't want to glow in the dark when I get older. So um, so I, I always make sure that um, all of the stuff that I use is non-toxic and that's one of the, the greatest things I think about um, the Akua inks. So like I said before, they can sometimes, the they're so highly pigmented and sometimes the ink can kind of separate from the binder. So when you're inking, you always want to just um, stir it up a little bit. It's not like your inks are going to go bad. Um, you just need to stir them up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to the mixture that I had already made here. I'm just going to add some blue 
And for this one, I'm just gonna ink the bottom part so that you can kind of see that texture. And then I'm gonna layer the two prints together. Um, every artist has a different registration technique. I'm winging it right now, so I can just kind of do this down and dirty and quick for you. Um, but I mean, by all means, there are many, many different ways to register. And believe it or not, I used the Akua inks with my fourth graders. I used all of the techniques, all of the products that you see here. I used them both with my, my fourth graders as well as with my, um, my adult printmaking class. So all of this stuff is really accessible for all ages. And so just to show you again, these are the Akua inks, which of course it's backwards here on the screen, but um, so here we go. I'm going to ink this guy up. So I'm going to pick up some of the blues. I might do something a little creative with this. We'll see. I kind of liked the way this, this towel was working. Um, I've used some paper towels where they just start to deteriorate as you're starting to uh, wipe the plate. Obviously, I would use something different if it starts to dissolve, but this seems to be working all right. And again, I've let these plates sit around for a while, so um, the Carborundum gel has definitely cured on these. Um, if I was, if it hadn't cured, I would start picking up some of the Carborundum gel off of what I'm working on. And that would be uh, kind of bad news bears, right? So I'm gonna just add a little more ink. And again, if you are into etching, you can do some of, like, all of those inking techniques that you know in etching, um, a la poupée, um, using stencils, all of that will work with this. Okay. All righty. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. And this is why you wear gloves. So now I'm going to put this back on the press and we'll see what we get. Now this is kind of good. I think someone asked a really great question about um, what kind of paper, why does it have to be wet? Um, so this paper that I pulled the first half of my print on is sort of drying. So we'll see what the quality of paper or what the quality of the print is when I pull this side. It should be just as dark, just as vibrant. And if not, then that's a sign that the paper is too dry and I would wanna rinse it, like get it a little more wet and then try this again. So here we go. Um, so I'm gonna go over here on my press. And for this, this is one of those processes where it really does work best on a printing press because you need that downward pressure. Um, I tried doing rolling pin uh, and I wasn't able to pull up as much ink as I would want. So just saying, all right, so uh, this is the, oh, here's another way to register if you're doing an eyeball technique and you're trying to get this uh, down and dirty. All right, so <laughs> what I'm gonna do is just sort of match it up with where I want it to go. Ha <laughs> ha And then I'm gonna put it on the press. through, wait for that ka-chunk, there's my little ka-chunk, and then I'm going to pull it out. All right, so you can see how it's a little bit lighter, but it still turned out pretty well, and so that, my friends, is how to, um, to pull a carborundum plate. So again, you could technically do this without a 
press, but it's not gonna give you the same effect. It's really not gonna be able to have this, the downward pressure that you really need. Um, but you know what? There's always a, an experiment. Let's try it out. Let's see what we get here. So what I'm gonna do is like, this is the ideal world, right? Like you have a printing plate, you're, you have a printing press, and you did everything by the book. You ready to do an experiment with me? Let's do it. So I'm still gonna use wet paint or wet paper because I wanna make sure that if I'm able to do this without a press, um, I'm able to pull off as much ink as I possibly can. All right, so I'm still gonna try that. I'm gonna try this guy, um, which is the house, uh, cause it's, it'll be a little more clear if it works or not. Let's say definitively, let's, let's find out definitively if this will work without a press. It has worked to varying degrees before. We'll see. Um, now, my rolling pin is somewhere in this house, but I think it probably got commandeered by my kitchen at some point. So I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use a brayer to try and pull off some of the ink. All right, I'm gonna use my Tarleton paper towel. I'm gonna do a gentle wipe. Again, if you wanna keep some of that plate tone, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm leaving some ink on the areas so that I can kind of get that sort of ethereal, ghosty, look that can sometimes work really nicely depending on the mood that you're trying to set with your piece and so here we go i'm going to use wet paper which means that it needs to be blotted dry a little bit And again, you know, if for like I I created a wet pack where I put paper in a plastic bag and then sprayed it down so that I and I did multiple layers of paper at a time so that that way at any point when I go into that bag I can just grab wet paper that's ready to go. But you can put the paper in a tub of water um, and let it soak. But again, it has to be. Um, it, it has to be uh, an, a, a cotton paper. I want it to be damp, but not soaking. So I'm gonna just dry this off. And I don't see any shiny spots, so that means that this paper is ready to go. All right. And I guess it really doesn't matter where I put this, right? Just go like that. Let's see. I'm gonna apply quite a bit of downward pressure. You folks are gonna see this before I will. Oh my gosh, hey, wow, guess what? You don't need a press for this. <laughs> it's still clearer when I do use a printing press, right? Like you can hear, let's see the difference. Like this looks a little bit like not as crisp as this one does, but it's a relief print. So yeah, yeah, we can do this without a press guys. So that's pretty exciting. You saw it here first. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you have a really good time uh, trying to experiment with this technique. Um, the whole idea behind it, the whole reason that it was created was really kind of experimental. Um, and like I said, like this can play well with others. So you could take an etching plate and do carborundum with an etching. You can take a screen print and do a uh, carborundum print with a screen print. You can block print over this. Like if I wanted, I could take one of my block prints and print over top of this. So. Keep in mind, all of these print techniques are just different languages that all are talking the same, they're all talking about the same stuff. So, um, 
have a wonderful time making prints. Try your hand at using this stuff. It's really a lot of fun. Try your hand at using the Akua inks. They're also really fun. And happy printmaking. Enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, tune in at two o'clock. Um, I'm doing a demo for the kids in your life. So um, if you uh, are, are looking for some really great activities to do with your youngsters while everybody's uh, stuck at home, feel free to check in at two o'clock right here live on Speedball. Speedball. Um, all right. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.